Y'all, it is five o'clock in the evening and I've been wearing a hoodie all day, which although I am really getting geared up for fall, it is still August in Arkansas, which means that if I've been in a hoodie all day, it's because I have not gone outside much at all. It has been a productive day though. I've just been doing a lot in the kitchen. Now Jack is home from his first day of seventh grade. It was okay. <laughs> it was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It was yep. a lot different than six. I, thought, I didn't think it'd be that different. Yeah, it was. it was a lot different. And today you started football? Mm -hmm. I got to see the weight, I got to get, go to the weight room and all that. So now, Jack and I are going to make pretzels. Just kind of like our thing. We made soft pretzels for the first time. When was that, Jackson? Several months ago, right? And uh, we liked them very much. He is about to proof this yeast, and we're gonna get started on this. Now what does it say for Four teaspoons yeast and one teaspoon sugar. <laughs> White sugar, one teaspoon, four teaspoons. So we're gonna proof our yeast. Right here we've got our warm water, sugar. In a little while, we'll, have, we'll need some help in a little while, okay? This is Jackson's job, okay? Put four teaspoons in there. Four, right? Yep, four, four teaspoons. Yeast kept in the freezer lasts significantly longer. Also, um, I buy yeast bulk at Sam's Club. It is significantly cheaper. You just put it in a jar, put it in the freezer. We have tried multiple pretzel recipes that we did not like, and we finally found one that we really like. I will put a link to it below in case you wanna try out making it at home. Five cups of flour, which we also buy in bulk because we go through quite a lot of it. Now we're doing half a cup of white sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, we're gonna mix all that together. Now we've got a well in the center and we're going to pour a tablespoon of oil in as well as our proof yeast. Now Jackson's gonna pour the yeast right into the middle of this and then scrape the rest of it out with a little rubber spatula. And then we're gonna mix this bad boy for about seven or eight minutes in the stand mixer. Scra look, scrape this out. Get all the yeast in there. I am actually about to save these cucumelon seeds because I pulled out my one cucumelon plant that was pretty much done and there were several little tiny cucumelons that had fallen down to the ground underneath it. So we just picked up the bigger ones. I'm gonna save the seeds. I do have another round of cucumelons that are just starting to set flowers. So we're not done getting them for the year. But these will be next year's cucumelons. Cucumelons are tiny. And so their seeds are also tiny. So we're just cutting them open, just like this. And then I've got a couple already done in here where I'm just squeezing that gel and those seeds out into a jar. Now after I get them all squeezed out in here, I'll put some water in it, set this on the windowsill to ferment, so that all of that gel can break down and then we can dry our seeds out and save them. Our cucumelon seeds are ready to go in the windowsill. I'll give those a little shake about once or twice a day over the next uh, couple of days. And here in about three days, I'll strain them, lay them out on a paper towel and let them dry and then put them up for next year. Now, our dough is looking pretty dry. So we're just gonna add a tablespoon of water at a time until it starts to form a ball. <laughs> okay, Jack, you're gonna put it over here. Put our dough into a greased bowl. This bowl is my favorite uh, dough proofing bowl. I don't know where it came from. I got it at a garage sale, I don't know, like seven or eight years ago and I've been using it for proofing bread since then and it's the best. My dough's in the bowl. Just gonna cover it up with a clean towel. We'll leave it there for 45 minutes to an hour. Kitchen's fairly warm right now so it should rise pretty quickly. In the meantime, I'm going to put on a t-shirt and go outside and see what Jeremiah is up to. Hey Cole. Guts. Jeremiah 
is laying out the kid garden and starting work on the beds. And we're just kind of trying to decide what we're gonna do with the space and how exactly we're gonna lay it out. We have two cattle panels to do arch trellises for them. And we wanna do kind of like a little bit of a mimicking of my garden with having a seating area in the middle and then just a few beds around it with some arch trellises. How's it going? So we have this vinyl siding that we had in the junkyard and Jeremiah is playing around with maybe trying to make some of the beds out of it. Now these are going to be shallow and we're not 100% sure how well that's going to hold up, but it's just kind of an experiment. Potato soup. What? Po. Po. Te. Te. To. To. Soup. Soup. Tomato soup. Not tomato soup. Tomato soup. It's potato soup for dinner. Today I've been hanging up posters and stuff and kind of getting this space ready to be our homeschool space. Those little things aren't like huge educational tools. These little posters, they are a little bit, but more than anything, I like to do something to kind of differentiate this space and get the kids excited about starting school. Got the easel out, just kind of got all this stuff set up and ready because tomorrow is our first day of homeschool. The okra is a jungle. Several of the plants are like feet taller than me and they make me so itchy. So I've been putting off harvesting them and some of them have gotten really big, which is a waste. Ben, what are you doing with those okras? I eat it. Can you eat it? No, that's a leaf. He's putting them in the compost. That is not the compost. No. Okay, he's attempting to throw it in the compost. This and is looks like he's missing like nine out of 10. Okay. Picked all the okra, threw out what was too big, got the tender stuff, and I've also picked just enough Tabasco peppers to put in a little glass jar with some vinegar. There's still quite a lot more to do down here. I almost just poured out all the stuff I just picked. But I have pretzel dough inside that I'm sure has doubled at this point, so we are gonna go out and make some pretzels. Bear jumped in the water trough, so he is about to go hang out with the goats while he dries off. Come on, you are not coming in the house. Come on, goat yard. Go dry off, hang out with your friends. Okay, now we're going to make a wash with baking soda and hot water which is a half a cup of baking soda and four cups of hot water. And we're gonna dip our pretzel bites in this before we put them in the oven. My first job whenever I was 16 years old was the pretzel maker in the mall. Um, I worked there for like two years, all through high school. And uh, my friend that worked with me and I would make all kinds of creations with the ingredients. And we came up with this thing that was like pretzel dough and it had all the like meats that we had because we had pepperonis and different lunch meats for different menu items. And we put all of them in this dough wrapper with all these cheeses and slathered it with butter and put pretzel salt all over it and like garlic and anyway, it was probably kind of gross to be honest. <laughs> but years later, whenever I was pregnant with Asher, I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee and I got a craving for that creation so bad that I literally thought about it for months obsessively. It's all I could think about. And nothing else was, was good, because if you've ever been pregnant, you know how pregnancy cravings are. Well, I ended up coming back to visit my parents who were living in central Arkansas and going to that mall, to that particular pretzel maker location and paying the kid that, that was working there to let me behind the counter to make this thing because I needed it. And of course he let me and I made my creation and quenched my pregnancy craving. I should add that was like 11 years ago. So whoever that kid is, I'm sure he's moved on. I'm sure the manager's moved on and hopefully no one can get in trouble for that. <laughs> All right, so this recipe states that it is for like shaped pretzels which if you wanted to make a shaped pretzel, 
you could stretch this dough out enough and essentially roll it, twist it like this, and back on itself. Now this dough, it doesn't have a ton of stretch to it. It has a great texture for like pretzels. I mean, it's the perfect pretzel texture, but it doesn't have a lot of stretch. It just bounces back. It, you can stretch it out, but only so far. So when you do make actual shaped pretzels, you end up with really fat ones, right? Like whenever we first mm -hmm. tried that. So what Jackson and I decided to do was stretch the dough out in ropes and then cut it into bites. So you still get that great pretzel texture, but you don't have to worry about them being really fat pretzels with real, like undercooked parts. It's a lot easier too. It is a lot easier to, to do it this way. So our process is usually that I stretch the dough out and cut it into bites. And then Jackson dips it into our baking soda mixture and lays it out on the pan. That does settle real quick. So you want to keep a spoon nearby to be able to uh, stir it up. See me rubbing my hands? That okra has got my hands itching like crazy. I've already washed them really well, but they still itch. Okay, you want to go for it? Yeah. All right, the oven's hot, so we're gonna put these, I'm gonna move that rack up. We're gonna put these pretzels in. Okay, we're gonna set a timer for seven minutes and then check it. These take somewhere between seven to nine. I am about to melt a stick of butter. This is just plain old butter. This is salted, you can use either one. It's really good with like real good grass-fed butter, something like that, that has just a real strong flavor, but just plain old butter works fine too. So we're gonna melt this and then I'm gonna clarify it by skimming it through a fine mesh strainer to get good, clear, melted butter and that's what we're going to toss our pretzels in. I actually used the same bowl that we let the dough rise in to put our butter in after it is skimmed. We had to let them go about an extra minute after the seven minutes was up. Set them up there. All right now for a little trick I learned in my pretzel maker day. Okay, so we're gonna take a few of these bites and put them here. We okay, Jack's gonna video. Okay. So we're gonna take a few of these bites and put them in this little thing. It helps if you have a bigger, deeper one of these, but my larger one is broken and I only ever think about it while I'm using it. Okay, come over here. It's still on the floor. It's fine. So we're just gonna toss these in here. Dang it, this is far less impressive than it should be. Yep. <laughs> Let's put them on this plate. They're good and soft still. Now I don't play with soft pretzels because they have to be like the ones in the mall or else they're not good. And these are. Like super doughy and nice crusty outside, super soft. Definitely a recipe to try. Yeah, mustard. Do I have mustard? Yeah, mustard. Yeah. All right, Daddy, you want to give these boys their pretzels and let's see what they think? Hey, who had mustard? Ben? Uh, ben, had mustard. ben had mustard. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Pretzels were a hit, and Jeremiah finished a raised garden bed in the kid garden. However, I didn't get out there in time to show you guys, and it got dark. I might be able to sneak a peek here. Can you see it down there? Yeah, you can. It's gonna be really neat. It's just a little past eight o'clock, which is school night, bedtime. Praise the Lord. We're gonna put these children in bed and we will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. I bless you, until next time.